Hi, this is Andy from Orbit Media. There are a lot of ways to do social media and a lot of ways to get help from AI to do social media. I've been experimenting and playing with this now for months and I wanted to share a few thoughts that I had about AI for social media. Super fun topic, broad, all kinds of possibilities. Let's jump in. Here's my problem with the way people use AI. It's lazy prompting. They're just doing lazy prompting and it looks kind of like this. Write a social media post promoting an article about web design. Exciting news, emojis, AI typical language, boring. It's super generic. It tastes like water. I kind of joke that things like this, AI might as well stand for average information because it's just the summary of the internet, right? It just found a, like, there's a general advice and it wrote a thing. We can do better than that by giving it the specific article. Write a social media post promoting the following article about the specific topic web design requirements. Copy and paste in the, the article, come down here, and it gives us a far better social media post. But I don't think that's the best way to use AI for social media. I think if you give it an article, you can use AI to find the best sound bites and the juiciest nuggets from that article, and then go write the social media post yourself. Let's try that for a change. What are the three most unexpected, compelling, memorable, or funny ideas and sound bites from that article? Here we go. Uh, no amount of cheese can fix a bad mousetrap. That's a pretty nice soundbite. I'd forgotten that I'd written that. Digital ink is never dry. Wow, that's a really quotable thing. Kind of sticks in the mind, right? Easy to say, like hard to forget. Four seconds is way too long to wait. Every one of these three things is far better than the generic posts that wrote a minute ago. I can now use these to write my own posts and get far better traction. I'm going to go farther than that, but I'm going to do that by giving it data first. I'm very active on LinkedIn, and I'm going to give, first give AI my LinkedIn performance, have it do some analysis. Everything I'm going to do here, I'm going to do with just OpenAI's ChatGPT, but I am using a ChatGPT Plus account, which is what allows me to upload files and what allows it to draw little uh, charts and do analysis for me. Here I am in LinkedIn. I've got creator mode, so I've got a little analytics thing at the top. I can click that. And then I come in, I'm going to take just impressions, for example, go for a very long date range. I'm going to export that. I get very excited now in the era of AI whenever I see an export button because I'm going to upload this data to AI and get some quick insights. And it gives me a mess. It's a big mess. This is not structured data. It's not that helpful. LinkedIn data is not very good for AI. So two hours later, and then I get it. And so it's in really good shape. Now I've got the post text in one column. I, I categorize and tag them all as topics. Then in this column over here, is it a newsletter? Is it a video? Is it a social post? And then all the metrics like that. Now I'm going to upload this to AI and it's going to do a much better job of giving me insights because I'm going to get much more to work with. You're an expert, social media marketing data analyst. You're skilled at finding insights about data from social posts. I'm giving you data showing the performance of top LinkedIn posts posted on a personal profile, my own profile, over the last one year. Which topics get the most follower growth per post, per engagement, and per impression? It starts crunching through the numbers. Let's go deeper. Draw a heat map matrix showing the normalized average impressions, average engagements, average number of comments, number of reposts, and average number of new followers from each category. It comes back and draws me a heat map matrix that I love a lot. It actually is very insightful because over on the left, I've got all of my topics. That's the things that I post about on LinkedIn. And across the bottom, I've got all my metrics. And surprise, surprise, the topics that get the most new followers are analytics, but those do not get the most engagement. The topics that get the most engagement, web design and UX, do not attract the most followers. So now I can actually tune my social activity to, for the metric I'm trying to impact, right? It's like, Unexpected insights, like this is what I love. And that chart is, by the way, a great thing to bring to a meeting, like have AI draw charts for you. How about these prompts? How does word count, numbers, emoji correlate with, the, with performance? Do some semantic distance analysis and tell me which subtopics aren't represented in this data set, but would perform well. Using topics and tone of these posts, create a LinkedIn post that's likely to drive high engagement, high comments, and high reposts. Summarize a content strategy based on all the data in this data set. Now, before I'm done, it got some insights. Before I'm done, I'm going to ask it for one more thing that I can use to 
come back and do this analysis again later, create a prompt that can work as a style guide that I can give to ChatGPT so that AI can effectively write future posts in the same voice, tone, and style. It did it. There it is. Not too bad. There's my tone and style. It summarized it nicely. So I can take that out of there and I can go back, right? It's not going to like use like, you know, 65 emojis and like unlock the secrets of and like unleash the power of. I don't write that way. It doesn't, I don't want it to do that anymore. Now, I'm going to save that in my shared prompt library. Here's a behind the scenes screenshot of my own shared prompt library that my team has access to. Every cool trick I learn goes in here. Anyone on my team can use this anytime. These are just examples of, of prompts that you can use. Uh, you know, you should have your own shared prompt library probably. It's a fast way to, uh, to you know, leverage your insights with other team members and kind of, uh, so other people have access to like this little spell book where you do these like little magic tricks. Quite useful. Now, very, very difficult to take a long transcript and pull out an article from it or pull out social posts from it. That is murder. Have you ever tried that to take like a, you know, these huge blocky text, you know, monologues and then format that to align with digital content best practices? Super hard, but AI can do it beautifully. I was on a conversation. It was a conversation about AI. Here I am talking to Paul Reitzer and Chris Carr. And all I have to do is scroll down, click on show transcript, copy and paste that transcript out into a text file, upload that transcript and suggest five articles based on the transcript. That's really useful, right? Those are great article ideas. And I can find my social post to promote that article or to promote this YouTube video. Which statements in this video are people most likely to be surprised by? Which soundbite would make the best video clip for social media? And it comes back and tells me exactly on which line were the most surprising statements and which lines were the most potentially good sound bites for social media. That's a fantastic way to do social. You take this big body of work, have AI just look at it closely and look for those emotional triggers that you could then use in social posts. Speaking of being triggered, I've got a video here on YouTube where I put a, uh, I, I kind of did this like roundup of things that I think should be removed from websites. It's kind of a strong opinion piece. I make the case that a lot of things should just be removed. Like don't put press releases on your website and you know, PDF files, there should be an alternate version. You should have an HTML version of everything and dates on blogs. Just make your dates look, your blogs look older, faster. Wow. People got pretty uh, passionate about that. I got hundreds, literally hundreds of comments, uh, half or more are negative. Uh, people were, uh, had strong feelings about this. I got a lot of feedback on that. Right? Someone called me sleazy and untrustworthy, hate in all capital letters, right? Great work, dude. You told people to make low information, useless blog posts. Do not remove the date, all caps. This woman, my beautiful health, won't even watch the video because she thought the advice was so terrible, just based on the comments. This guy thinks that I don't know what I'm talking about. I should let an experienced UX designer do the talking. I've been part of the planning process for more than a thousand websites in 24 years. I have been, I'm in and out of analytics accounts every day. I have some experience here. There are some positive comments. Uh, that guy thinks I look like Joseph Gordon-Levitt. This guy thinks I dye my hair. For the record, I do not dye my hair. Anyway, my point is this is triggering to the algorithm because it, it elicited so much engagement that, that uh, YouTube decided to show it to, by, at this time, it's more than 200,000, hundreds of thousands of people have seen this video. Why did the YouTube algorithm do that? It's because it saw all that engagement on the topic. Why did it see engagement on the topic? Because I took a stand on a thing, even though it was pretty mundane, that's the algorithm rewarding me for having, uh, for drawing a line in the sand, right? And saying something. Now that, by the way, first of all, differentiates my content immediately from ChatGPT because ChatGPT cannot throw a punch for the record, right? It has no points of view. It has no opinion. You're, you have a perspective, it cannot, but ChatGPT can help you find provocative topics. I'm gonna use an example, this is a space, craft company. I was using this for another presentation. Uh, my target audience in this example is commercial satellite launch operators. Look at this prompt and you can imagine how well this might work for you. What are some relatively mundane, almost trivial space industry topics that professionals have very strong opinions about? Units of measurement. <laughs> for sure, they're going to want to talk about that. Metric versus imperial. Naming conventions. How do you name spacecraft and celestial bodies and features on planets? These are going to be really interesting to people, right? You can use this prompt to find the provocative but mundane topic so that you can tiptoe toward a thought leadership kind of tone without like, you know, uh, taking on like massive, like global geopolitical social justice issues. Really interesting, right? Um, 
Lots of these, I'm gonna share some similar prompts. What questions are people in this industry afraid to answer? What false things do people in this industry believe to be true? What are the most common assertions in this industry that are least likely to be supported by evidence? And what are the most important blog topics that, pe that are least likely to be covered by the big blogs? This last one's a good one. What counter narrative opinions about this topic are the least likely to be discussed by thought leaders? This is catnip for social media. This is very triggering. It's gonna get a ton of engagement. Here's an example. Common assertions related to satellite launches that are least likely to be supported by evidence. It comes back, right? Space debris, hyperbole, you know, commercial viability is misjudged. You know, it's, it's got all kinds of great ideas for me. All of these things might trigger a strong response. Those strong response would trigger the algorithm. Algorithm triggering, of course, triggers, uh, creates like exponentially greater visual, greater engagement. One last tip. I'm gonna use DALI, the image generator within OpenAI's uh, ChatGPT. And my prompt is quite simple. The faces of a small diverse group of satellite operators in a control room during launch. Vivid, beautiful, right? It's an incredible image. Um, but I'm looking for some more energy, so let's pump it up. Now they're excited that it was a successful launch. Wow, <laughs> they are so happy. I think that's a great picture. That would definitely create uh, you know, some, some engagement on social media, you can imagine. But let's take it even farther. They're thrilled that the rocket launch was so successful. Wow, it's just blowing up. Look at these people. They're celebrating the most successful launch of all time. Boom. Wow, look, they've got the champagne open, the rocket's launching in the background. It's like a, a huge party. Can we go even farther? Yes, we can. The happiest rocket launch party ever filled with ecstatic satellite operators. The rocket launch was totally awesome. I mean, it was super rad. Wow, look at these faces. Look at that explosion in the background. Now that is, uh, but uh, what happened to my diversity, right? Let's bring that back. Hold on a minute. Make it more diverse, I guess, kind of ethnic party hats. Uh, you probably shouldn't launch a satellite from inside the control room. Look, it's blowing these people back. Uh, invented new countries. Uh, actually, I've surprisingly spelled all the words correctly, but uh, making up some new flags and literally shooting that rocket through the roof of the control room. That was fun. So many ways. Hopefully, right? We 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 created images. We found juicy sound bites. We had it create a style guide for us. We gave it social media data. All kinds of applications for AI and social media. We're just scratching the surface, but hopefully, this opened your eyes to some of the options. Again, Andy from Orbit Media. Hope you found this useful. Uh, feel free to share it or pass it along to anyone you know who's uh, trying to um, unlock, unleash the power of AI and social media. Thanks. Bye bye.